This is the Yealink T53 phone video tutorial presented by Preferred Data Voice Networks. Please see the Preferred Data Voice Networks phone user guide for the Yealink SIP T53 or SIP T53W for more information. The Yealink T53 model phone has a display with eight buttons along the side. It can have up to three pages of seven buttons with the lower right button used as a shift key to see the other pages that are programmed. The buttons are typically programmed with two or three extension buttons, part keys, and then quick dials to other extensions or speed dial buttons. Soft keys are located along the bottom of the screen and will change depending on the current status of the phone. When your phone is idle, your soft keys will show history, directory, do not disturb, and menu. Your phone's soft keys may differ slightly depending on the setup and may have page or other features as well. If you touch the history button, you can see all the calls that are made on your phone. And then if you use your navigation keys, you can go across the, to the right and see missed calls, calls that came in that were not answered, placed calls, calls made out, received calls, calls that came in and were answered, and then forwarded calls if your phone had been forwarded. When you're within any menu, you can touch back or you can just pick up and hang up the handset to return to the main screen. Your directory can be used if you touch that button. Local directory would be something that you would upload to the phone GUI and we can help with that. Of course, history you've already seen. And if you go down to company directory and select, then select again, you can see your company directory sorted by either first or last name depending on how it's been set up by your system administrator. DND stands for Do Not Disturb. If you touch that, you will see an icon on your phone that says DND, and any calls that are transferred to your extension or made to your direct dial number will go straight to voicemail if you have voicemail set up. If you don't have voicemail, they'll go to any other failover destination programmed on your extension. And if your phone is in a ring group and you're in Do Not Disturb, it just means that the calls will not ring on your phone, but they will continue to ring on the other extensions in the ring group. So you touch it again to turn it off. It's just a toggle. And then menu can be used to access menu options such as um, features and settings. One of the most common requests that we see is for the ringtone. So if you go down from menu and touch settings or select settings and then basic settings and go down to sound, then you can select ringtones and then common means the calls that come to your to your main extension and then you can go down and select the different ringtones that you and then if you want to select it you can just touch OK. I'm not going to change mine so I'm just going to pick up and hang up to go back to my main screen. The built-in buttons on the phone are the navigation keys which you've seen me using and we've got an OK and an exit and then volume is going to control what you're doing at the time. So if you're on a speakerphone call, it'll adjust the speaker volume. If you're on a handset call, it'll adjust the handset volume. And then if your phone is idle, it will adjust the ring volume. And the volume is going to stay at what you set it at. So if you set it low, then the next time the caller comes in, you, they might be a little bit low. Um, okay, and then um, along the bottom here, I've got a speaker button. That's used to make a speaker call. This is an enhanced redial button. If you touch it once, it will show you all the place calls made from your phone. And if you touch it twice, it will call that last number that you called. If it was an extension number, it's gonna call an extension number, or if it was an outside number, it's gonna call the outside number. This is a voicemail button. It looks like a letter or an envelope. So if you touch that, and we'll go over how to um, set up and access voicemail. This is a headset button. This is for only certain headsets. Most headsets are going to have a ring in the ear button and you're going to touch the button on the headset itself to answer and disconnect. And please contact us if you want to get a headset and we will help you with compatibility. And then this is a mute button so if you touch that you can mute yourself to the callers on both speaker and handset. So to make a call, you simply start dialing. If it's a, um, if you used to dial seven digit, just keep dialing seven digit. If you need to dial long distance, you can dial the area code. You can dial the one or don't dial the one. It's a lot like a cell phone. So the uh, digits are not output put to the public switch telephone network until you touch call. So you can touch delete to backspace if you want to redial some something and then and when you're ready you can touch call and place that call so then the call is gonna ring <laughs> if it were a long distance number it would call the long distance and see you can see I called my office but it showed up with the area code there 
Okay, so then my soft keys along the bottom have changed, so I have options to transfer, hold, conference, and end call. Um, all systems that are on the PDBN VoIP are going to have built-in music on hold, so if you touch the hold button, your caller will hear music on hold. You'll see that the call is held, and your little um, extension key will blink in green like that. To return to the caller, you simply touch the resume button to return to them. So that is something if you want to manage and handle a call from your desk, you can place them on hold, they'll hear on hold music, and then resume to return to the caller. But this will not be accessible by to any other extensions on the system. When you're on a call here, if you want to mute yourself to the caller, again, you're going to touch that mute button and it lights in red and notifies you on your display that you're muted. So it's not on hold because you can actually hear the caller. So the caller can talk and be heard, hello, 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 but they can't hear you. And that's the same on handset. So if you pick up your handset, you can talk to the caller, but if uh, you're muted, they will not hear you. And then to go back to speaker, you just touch the speaker button and place the handset in cradle. And of course you can touch that mute button so they can hear you. So if you have a call for somebody else within your organization, um, you can either park or transfer the call. So park is going to be a way to place a call in a park orbit. So if you will see on your phone, you're going to have park orbits that are numbered, right? So I have park one, two, three. So if I touch park one, that park one bu button lights on my phone and the call has gone away. My phone's gone back to idle status and you can see my extension buttons are, are not lit. So I can notify the person that they have a call parked and they can go to any phone and touch that park one button to retrieve the call. So this again was an outbound number. So when I touch park one, it's going to retrieve the number that was called out. However, if it were an inbound call, it would show the caller's caller ID information as well. So I can also park that call for myself. So a lot of times I will do that. I will place the call on park and retrieve it from another phone within the company. I just know that the call was parked for myself. So here I have a call. If I want to transfer it to somebody, then um, I can use my buttons. So if I have a button for the person here, I can touch the shift key and see all of the buttons. So I'm going to transfer it here to myself, Melissa. So if I touch that button, then it's going to ring on that extension and it is actually just completely gone from my phone, but I can see that blinking button. So if I accidentally transferred it there, I can touch that button to retrieve the call. Um, any button that you have that blinks in red indicates that that extension is ringing. And if you touch it, you have a call pickup to pick up calls that are ringing on that phone. So um, these buttons on this phone are set up for blind transfer, meaning that if I touch the button, I'm transferring and I'm done with it. There's no announce. If I want to announce the call, then I can touch transfer, dial the extension number, and then touch call to have a conversation with that person. So then they answer. And then I can say, do you want the call? They say yes. And if they say yes, I touch transfer again. If they say no, then I touch end call and resume to return to the caller. So that's a difference between attended and blind transfer. Attended means that you announce a call. Blind means that you're just sending without an announce. And like I said, the buttons can be programmed depending on your company preference. So if your buttons are set up for attended transfer, where you touch it and it calls the extension, but you want to send a blind transfer and not announce, then again, you would do transfer, dial the extension number, but then here you can touch B transfer. And you see now here it's blinking on this phone button and they can answer or let it go to voicemail, whatever happens. Now, when you transfer a call to another extension, they will hear ringing and they will see the inbound caller ID of the person that, um, called in so they will have that information and can decide for themselves whether to answer the call or let it go to voicemail. So when a call is ringing at your phone you'll hear the ringing and you'll see the inbound caller ID name and number and you'll see across the bottom it says answer forward silence and reject. So I'm going to touch answer to retrieve the call. If I touch forward 
then the caller is going to, I can put in an extension number and just automatically send it to another extension. So obviously that is very rarely used. If I touch reject, it will go to my failover destination, which is typically voicemail. And if I touch silence, it will ring a few times without ringing my phone, if that makes sense. So the caller he hears the regular amount of ringing, but I don't, and then it goes to my voicemail or other failover um, destination. So when I'm on a call, I might receive a second call. And so here's what that looks like. So I'm talking on this first call and then I hear a little beep or tone. I've got it on speaker, but if it, I were on handset, it would be in my ear. And then I can see this is blinking in green and I can see an incoming call with the caller ID information there. So if I touch answer, then I can automatically answer that call and it automatically places that first call on hold. See, it's blinking in green here. So then I can touch swap to toggle basically between the two calls. You can kind of tell, I know they're both from me, so you can see the caller ID is the same, but you can see the elapsed time of call is different. So then here I can decide if I want to transfer this call, park it, hang up on them, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and hang up on this one, and then I'm going to resume my previous call. Say I'm on a call and I want to make another call out, like I need to find out something or um, talk to one of my, uh, somebody in my office, then I can touch hold and then I can touch my second DN or extension button and call that other extension or I can push their button. So then I can have a conversation with them, talk about what I need to talk about find out the answer to my question, end call, and then resume to return to my first call. Another option is a three-way call. Let's see, okay, so I've got the call here. If I touch conference, I can make a three-way call, which means just adding another person to the call. So then I can um, call a number. Okay, wait for them to answer. Okay, and then I can touch conference again to have all three on a call. So I've got um, both calls here. And if I touch hold, I just basically put both of them on hold at the same time and they're hearing hold music. I can touch split to return to one or both or resume, I'm returning to both of them. And then if I touch manage, I can see both calls. So one is, they're, they're both me, so, but I can see the caller ID information if it were inbound or the number called if it was outbound. And then from here on each one, I can far mute, which means mute them, remove, which means hang up on them, or place them on hold, which is far hold. So if I touch far hold, for example, I'll see a, a little pause icon on that one. Then I can go down to this one and um, talk to them. I can mute them both. So I'm going to resume this call and then I can mute, say I want to talk and they don't, I don't want them to talk. They just are in listen only mode basically. So I've muted them. So there's a lot of things that you can do there on the conference call. And then um, say you have a call and you want to send it to an off-site number. So I'm going to, this, it can be inbound or outbound, it doesn't matter. So then I'm going to do transfer. So transfer can be used to send um, a call to an extension within the office, but it also can be used to send a call to an outside number. So I can call that second number, whoops, misdialed. Okay, and then I can Typically, I'm going to call when it's an outside number, like a cell phone, and make sure that they want to take the call, right? And then once they say, yes, I want to take that call, then I do transfer, and I've effectively sent that call to that outside number, like a cell phone, and I'm off completely. You can see that my phone is idle. So there's a lot of things that you can do to send calls around from your phone. Um, okay, so these buttons are um, typically used for calling extensions within the office, right? So if I touch that person's extension button, it's going to ring and then I can wait for them to answer. Once they answer, we can have a call and um, they can pick up the handset, it can be on handset, speaker, whatever. So that's just an um, extension to extension call. If I want to come through their speaker, then I can do a code, which is star zero and then touch their button and then it comes through the speaker. So it's going to give me a hands-free talk back so I can talk to the other phone without them having to pick up their handset. I just come right on through the speaker. And if you don't have a button for them, then you can do star zero and their extension number and call and get the same, same thing. So that's calling another extension. 
Some of the other features on the phone that people like to know about, one of them is called forwarding. So that is going to be done um, from the menu and then you're going to go to features and call forward. And here you can set it to do always, busy, or no answer. Typically it's going to be set for always. You can toggle it to on. So I'm going to use my little arrows here and then I'm going to put in my forwarding destination. So my forwarding destination might be an extension number or it might be a phone number. If it's a phone number, I'm going to put it in exactly as I would dial it from here. So either seven digits or um, 10 digits. Okay, so then if I do save, then it's going to tell me that it's saved and then here on my phone it's got an indicator that the calls are being forwarded. So when anybody calls my direct dial number they're forwarded to that alternate number and um, then I can touch history and go over like I showed you earlier and see the call that came in that was forwarded. So to unforward is basically the same thing. I'm going to do menu, features, call forward, and I'm just going to toggle it to off and save. Okay, so now I'm unforwarded. So to set up your voicemail box for the first time, you're going to touch the voicemail button and then you're going to hear a tutorial. The tutorial is going to play um, information about setting up your voicemail. So first it's going to ask you to put in your new password and then re-enter your new password. Thank you. Your new password has been saved. Now let's then it's going to prompt you to record your greeting. When they reach your mailbox, at the tone, please say your greeting. Then press any key or stop talking to end the recording. Hi, this is Melissa. I'm either on the phone or away from my desk. Leave a message after the tone and I will return your call as soon as possible. To save this recording, press 1. Saved. Congratulations. All right, so my voicemail is now set up and ready to roll. Now my phone is giving me notifications. So it says that I have a new voicemail and it also, you probably saw, said that I have a new missed call. So the notifications, um, once your mailbox has been set up, you'll be notified of new messages either on your phone or on your email or both. So that is customizable by extension. So some people only want it on the email and some people only want it on the phone. And it's just totally um, up to your system administrator as to how we set that up. So, and it's blankety blank here telling me um, I've got a voicemail, which looks like a little cassette tape and I've got a missed call. So if I touch connect here, then I can enter my password and then I can touch one to listen to messages. And by the way, it gives forwarding options, but seven is delete. Okay, so then I've checked my voicemail. It also says that I have new missed calls. And you may notice you come back from lunch or something and your red light is blinking and you may have new missed calls. So if you touch view or if your phone is idle and you touch history, then that will clear off. It's just a notification telling you that you have missed calls. Um, if you have voicemail sent to email, they will come from voicemail at pdbn.net as a WAV file and you'll need to open your attachment to listen. Um, you can either add or set up an audio player on your PC or mobile phone to listen. And then if you're on your PC listening to your or checking your emails, you can touch the person's phone number to call them back if you're on your mobile phone. Um, to change your password, greeting, or name recording in your mailbox, you're going to touch the voicemail button from your phone and then enter your password and then you're going to touch 5 to manage your mailbox. And then you just follow the prompts to do what you want to do. There is a temporary greeting that you can use for vacation and that sort of thing and not cover up your everyday greeting. So this concludes the video tutorial. Please contact us um, if you need help with anything. We're available by phone or email. Our main phone number is 225-924-2700 or toll free 800-487-8806. And you can also email us at info at pdvn.net.